Previously on The Bill. He's a psycho. Now you're convinced? Nothing is going to get in the way of our happiness. Scott murdered Karen. What's going to stop him killing again? You those coppers would let you go. It's the same old, same old. All right, Josh. Let's not have any more trouble. Oh, yeah. 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 Someone with that trolley. It weren't me. You were part of it, though, weren't you? What are you gonna do? Arrest me again? So how come we've never heard of it? Well, it's had a caution for cannabis. Other than that, it's kept himself clean. Wesley's old man's a known dealer. He's doing time for possession of cocaine with intent to supply. We thought maybe Wesley was trying to take over the family business while his father's inside. I can't have you two chasing around after a maybe. I thought Operation Mercury was about following up every lead. Look, speak to some of your informants, see what they know about Wesley James. We've got to have something we can act on. Morning, ma'am. Morning, Gary. You busy? Uh, you know me. Always keen to get stuck in. Good. So I've got a little job for you. At least someone recognises my talent. Must be for your body, big boy. It sure ain't your brain. Wait here. I want him charged with attempted murder. Yeah, yeah, all right. It wasn't only me. I want to talk to everyone involved, then I decide where I go from there. We just want to play cricket. What about the drinking? I don't drink, I'm a Muslim. But what about your mates? I can't help what they do. You can't go around dropping trolleys on people. That was Josh's idea. Revenge. Because Asbo boy got me arrested. Wait, copper. And you forget something? Can't put the cops on, yeah? We're all come down the station. <laughs> Should I call my mum? Let her know I've been arrested again. Keep an eye on them. I'm going to talk to Charlie. Don't even think about going anywhere. Oh. 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 Are you going to pay for these eggs? So this is what they call getting closer to the community. Who took you so back to the station? Where things are going, I'm going to have to call for a bus. Are you going to lock them up this time? It's down to the youth offending team. All I can do is put them in the system. I can remember the days when criminals went to prison. Yeah, but if you'd left them alone, let them play cricket instead of chasing them off, we wouldn't have this problem. And what about the mess? What about the drinking? Supposing I nick every kid in the estate, do you think it's going to do you any good? Like you say, they'll be back in no time and they'll be coming after you. It's your job to protect me. We can't be here 24-7. And with your history for trouble, I doubt whether the council will want to rehouse you. I don't want to move anyway. This isn't a joke, Charlie. I know that. This is my home. I have a right to defend it. Yes, but you have to live with the consequences. Uh, you want me to give in, right? Have them trample all over me. Carry on winding them up and someone's going to get seriously hurt. Is that what you want? How's it going? Scott was charged with assault early this morning. He's been taken to the magistrates later on. So he's still in custody? Yeah. How is he? Well, I haven't seen him since last night. He just wants to go to court and get this whole thing over and done with as soon as possible. Look, honey, I don't know if you know, but I was the one that interviewed Greg Campbell at hospital yesterday. Oh, yeah? What do you have to say for himself? Well, Greg still claims that Scott killed Karen Burnett. That's why he went looking for him yesterday, to tell him that he wouldn't get away with it. Same old, same old. Greg was in a pretty bad way. He still is. But you were there with me to break up the fight. You saw how much Scott was laying into Greg. His wife's murderer had just been freed from court. Would you be a little angry? I know. Or do you believe Greg? I think that Scott murdered Karen. I'm not saying that at all. Yvonne, I'm not an idiot. I know what Scott did. When we arrived at the scene yesterday and I saw him laying into Greg, I was more shocked than anyone. I've never seen him like that. If I'm going to be honest, it scared me a bit. Scott hates himself for what's happened. He's not a violent man. But with Greg goading him, he lost control for a moment. That's all. With what's been going on in his life recently, I think I can forgive him that. Look, 
untouched, you're looking out for me, but you really don't need to. Scott is a good, caring man. Yesterday was a one-off mistake. It never hurt anybody, especially not me. Is this your family? <laughs> I haven't seen them around the estate. They went back to Jamaica. Did you not want to go with them? They didn't invite me. I wonder why that was. Like I said, this is my home. If I went back to Kingston now, I wouldn't know the place. You don't have to be born somewhere to feel it's where you belong. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I'm from Yorkshire. Can't see myself going back there. You can't reason with those kids. Maybe if you got to know them a bit better. What do you expect me to do? Invite them wrong for a game of dominoes? They're not all that bad. All Saul wants to do is knock a ball around. Just been led astray by the other kids. Saul, he can't even hold a cricket bat. Did you used to play cricket? A long time ago. You said Saul wasn't holding his bat right. He thinks he's playing baseball, that one. It's painful to watch. How would you feel about volunteering for a spot of cricket coaching? Have a little sniff around the estate. See if you can paint us a picture on Wesley James. I won't make you down. I'm sure you won't. Saw you coveting my Danish, so I thought I'd nip out and get you one. Apple and cinnamon. Margaret, you are a diamond, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh. Sorry, it was the last one in the shop. Enjoy. Thank you. I'm going your way, so I'll give you a lift. Oh, very sweet, please. I'm a sweet guy. Do you know Wesley James? The plumber. I've seen the car come and go, but I couldn't really recommend him, I'm afraid. I've only just moved in myself. Thanks for the lift. Taking you to court. How are you? Well, nervous. My solicitor isn't guaranteeing bail, which is hardly surprising. I did beat Greg half to death. It's understandable. The man killed your wife. He should be in prison. You know, you could be right. Scott's not as squeaky clean as Honey thinks he is. You've changed your tune. I thought you said it's her business who she goes out with. I spoke to Greg after he'd recovered from Scott's beating. Yeah, what did he say? They had a row once. Scott's wife ended up in casualty. Scott put her there. Even if it's true, it doesn't mean Scott killed his wife. But it shows us what he's capable of. Unless Greg's lying. Otherwise, why haven't his defence counsel jumped on it? Call me, yeah? Yeah. So what are you going to do about it? Be a good copper. Check the facts before going in with both feet. Pony. You said you wanted to play, so let's see what you're made of. What about arresting us for attempted assault? Let's just say the court's out, yeah? It's a waste of time. You can't teach these kids anything. I don't know until you try. What's this? It's a cricket ball. A real one. This is minging. I'll have you not once bowled Gary Sobers with that ball. You knew Gary Sobers? Middle stump. We weren't such good friends after that. Who's Gary Sobers? Only the best all rounder that ever lived. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter, Grandpa? I'm too fast for you. I said bowl, not chuck it. That was a bowl. <laughs> Don't let him wind you up, Sol. He's trying to put you off. If it's lessons in sledging you want, hire an Australian. I'll bowl. Do you really think this is going to help? Maybe if they see they have something in common, they might stop trying to kill each other. <laughs> Bat straight. Keep your eye on the ball.
what we and Steve talking about. Steve? Yeah, when I was in custody with Scott, you and Steve were all cosied up. I just thought I had my name. Being paranoid. To a red transit with a broken rear injection right? and nine Sierra Echo yeah. Papa. With two IC1 males concerned in an assault on Jubilee Heights. Last seen heading towards Bonham Wharf. <sighs> Ambulance to Jubilee Heights over. What's your name? Chloe. Chloe Harris. Chloe? What's happened? Oh. So who are you? Mark Pemberton, her boyfriend. They were these men. They were dumping rubbish and I tried to stop them. You shouldn't have got involved. <laughs> You should do something about these fly tippers. They're a law unto themselves. Well, have you reported the matter to environmental health? That looks nasty. I'll take her to St Hughes. It's all right. We've already called an ambulance. No, we're not going to wait around for that lot. She'll bleed to death. Come on. Well, we need to take your details. You know where we live? Flat 54. All right. Well, we'll see you at the hospital. Anything? Yeah, there's an address. Jubilee Heights. Yeah, well, that's... Uh... Yeah, the rubbish is from these flats. Well, why would you dump rubbish on your own doorstep? Do any more typing? <laughs> Can you describe either of the men you saw dumping the rubbish? Well, we got a brief glints, but any further details would really help. It all happened so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Anything distinctive about them? Accent, scars. <sighs> One of them had bad breath. Right, is that it? I'm sorry, it's such a blur. You are going to do something about this. I mean, I know you lot. Dumping rubbish is not going to be high on your list of priorities, is it? Chloe's been assaulted. We do take that seriously. Any news on the transit? A red van driving erratically. What do you reckon? OK, I'll see you back at the station. Are you not coming? No, I've got to follow up a lead on another case. OK. Excuse me. Do you know if Nick Austin is about? Terry! Tell you what, mate, you are going to be kicking yourself. How's that? You know this Wesley James character? Yeah. Well, I've not pieced all the bits together, but the picture I'm getting is one big, fat potato up to his neck in cocaine. That's a really interesting image, Gary. You sure you've not been at the white stuff yourself? Yeah, you must be gutted the boss give it me to do. Well, we just have to bathe in your glory, mate. Hey, Terry, you know how you said you thought the boss fancied me? Did I say that? Well, you sort of hinted at it, didn't you? I mean, was you serious? Do you know, do you really think she does? How could she not, mate? Good point, man. How'd it go at St Hughes? St Hughes? Yeah, your other case. You can't fool me. You were sneaking off to set up a date with your hunky nurse. Rambled. So did you put that assault on Chris yet? Yeah, and I also spoke to a cleansing at the council. Apparently, they've had a load more rubbish from Jubilee Heights turn up all over the place. Bin men not doing their job properly? Well, bin men don't collect till Friday, and the letter we found had Monday's date. You sound like you've got a theory. Jubilee Heights is a smart address. People that live there have got a bit of money, and their rubbish is going to contain their bank statements, credit card bills, all useful stuff for anybody that wants to commit identity fraud. Bin raiding, we're not going to prove that. No, but if the gang are targeting the flats, we can warn the residents to be more careful about what they throw away. I've got a list. Right. Oh dear. Hey, any news on Scott's assault charge? No, not yet. Fiver says he gets away with it. Oh, thanks for your concern. Well, well what? Have you checked out Campbell's story? That nurse that I know at St. Hughes, Nick, he says he remembers Scott's wife coming in with facial injuries. Mm -hmm. So it's true then. But Nick says he believed her story about the car accident. But the doctor who treated her has given a statement to Campbell's defence. Well, saying what? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. But if Campbell's solicitor's interested in it, he may be looking at using the statement as evidence to discredit Scott. What should you tell Annie? Mm, well, Scott's been held on remand. Annie's out of danger. Given us a chance to check it out. Cheers. I'll let you know as soon as I hear So, when you're seeing him... Who? Nick. Oh, he's sort of left it open. Honestly, I don't know why you're wasting your time on that bloke. 
Let's get on the way. Till we lost the ball. Well, at least we could have talked instead of trying to kill each other. Yeah, cheers, mate. I owe you a drink. Ah, how's the social work? We're progressing. Yeah? I heard you was encouraging aerial attacks on parked cars. Go away, Gary. I'm not in the mood. Don't be like that, mate. Come on, we're all batting for the same side. If you know what I mean. Leave it out, yeah? Anyway, can't all be off playing games. Some of us got serious work to do. We well, mean sitting at computers drinking tea? Whatever it takes. No one said CID was a bed of roses. So what do you mean doing? Let's go, you say, full of yourself. Well, you know that drug dealer lead we got? It's really come up trumps, hasn't it? The yeah, MRL is going to be well chuffed. In fact, between me, you and the war, I think she's got the hots for me. What makes you think that? Well, it's just little things, you know. Like picking me for all the choice jobs. Yeah, Terry reckons it's a physical attraction. Terry says you've got something for me. We'll leave you guys to it, yeah? I'm sorry about that. Sorry about what? Nothing. Um, I had the boys in BIU runners up an IS2 so we can all see Wesley James's contacts at a glance. Now, these are people he's either meeting or who are making calls to his mobile, which we can trace. These are places he hangs about, all associated with drugs. Well, no great surprise he was living on the coal, eh? Have you run a financial check? Well, I've got details of his bank account. Money going in, no cash going out. So is he using his business as a cover? And to launder his profits. And he's definitely dealing? Well, this guy's a street-level dealer that we had intelligence on. So he's selling to dealers? We are not talking Little League. Well, where's he getting his gear from? Well, I don't know, but he's not connected to any of the big suppliers we know. Thanks, Gary. This is good work. Just doing my job. And you reckon he's dealing from home? Set up an obo, but I want it watertight. Let's put Wesley James into a corner, see if he squeaks. Is it about the flight of him? So, so. I don't think we'll be able to trace them, but we think the flats are being targeted by a bin raiding gang. They go through your rubbish looking for personal details they can use for fraud. Bank statements, credit card slips, that kind of thing. I know what you mean, but they can't do that at Jubilee Heights. The bin's kept in a secure area. Only the residents have got access. In theory. Everything all right? They think a bin raiding gang's been targeting flats. Well, I told you we were doing the right thing getting out of London. Yeah. We're moving out to Essex. Mark's going freelance and I'm going to work for him. We need more space. We've already sold my flat. Just need Mark to complete on his. So the flat at Jubilee Heights? Mine? Uh, well, until next week. Shall we go? Maybe Gary's right. About my real fancy. If you want results, maybe we should change tack. There, there is a problem with underage drinking on this day. Operation Mercury is about drugs, Laura. Yeah, but it's all connected. 14-year-olds getting off their heads. If they're drinking enough to throw up over your feet, they're drinking enough to poison themselves or have an accident. It could be one of my sons. And it's leading to other crime, vandalism, threatening behaviour. It's perfect breeding ground. Spare me the criminology. I've done all the courses. If we want to turn the coal A round, we've got to start with low-level nuisance. People want to feel safe, and, and then maybe they'll feel happier about cooperating on the heavy stuff. You can't stop kids drinking. Not without a cop on every corner. Yeah, but we know where they're getting the booze from. There's only one off-license still trading on the estate. So what are you suggesting? An obo on the only corner shop? I can't see that going down to all the locals. Look, we're supposed to be winning hearts and minds here, remember? Well, we could have a word with the licensee and explain to him the consequences of his law-breaking. Here's me hoping for action. Someone must be getting access to the rubbish. It can't be the bin men. Well, they don't come until Friday. We know there was a raid this week from the date on the letter that I found. Which means it must be an inside job. So much for security. Should we confiscate his mobile? Teach him a lesson on crime reduction? I'll settle for his video collection. Excuse me. There's got to be something on one of these. Well, if I'm right about the date on the letter, then the bins are raided sometime this week. CID, you've got an abo going. They're looking for bodies. Yeah, I'll be right there. Keep watching, yeah? Yeah. Have you said anything? You keep hanging around and honey is gonna twig. Well, maybe that's a good thing. I thought you agreed to play this my way. It's Chloe's boyfriend. What's he doing nicking the rubbish? Yvonne, look at this. 
Scott. I told you the two cents. I can't. Okay, I'll see you then. Scott. I love you. Good news, Scott's been bailed. What? Nothing. Well, what's with all this nothing? There's obviously something going on. You should keep your distance from Scott. You don't know what he's capable of. You what? He put his wife into hospital once. We don't know that. And where's all this coming from? Greg Campbell. And you believe him? That nurse that I know at St. Hugh's, Nick, he said Karen Burnett did come into casualty, but she said it was an accident. What's she gonna say? Is that why you've been so cagey? I can't believe you've been checking up on him behind my back. We don't want you to get her. Do you know what? I don't care if the whole station is gossiping about me, but you! I thought you were my mate. I am. That's why I wanted to check it out. You think Scott killed his wife? No! But something's not right. And someone I care about could be in danger. Do you expect me to ignore that and walk away? What kind of mate would that make me? I can understand Steve, but you... We both care about you. Steve, you can't bear to see me happy with anybody else. All he's saying is speak to Scott. What? And accuse him of murdering his wife? No one's saying he killed her. Greg Campbell is. Greg murdered Karen because she wouldn't leave Scott for him. And now Greg's trying to pin it all on Scott. I don't know what the truth is, but you've got to ask yourself, why did Karen start seeing Greg in the first place? Oh, women have a face for all sorts of reasons. Yeah, usually because their men aren't treating them right. Scott can be violent. What, because he attacks Greg? The man you think murdered your wife gets off and then comes around and accuses you. And he wasn't just saying it, he was right in his face. What would you do? You've got to admit, Scott does like to keep you close. His wife was killed by his best friend. He needs me, Yvonne. But I love Scott and I'm not going to let him down. Love, friendship, it's all about trust. Are you going to drive? Just look out for yourself, honey. That's all I'm saying. Now, Gary's done a lot of the groundwork on this, so I'm going to let him run the show. Thanks, ma'am. <clears throat> well, it's pretty standard, really. Now, the target is walking away. The target is Sorry walking away. That, yeah? Which means he keeps his stash at home and comes out to meet his punters for a sale. Uh, some of us have been here before, Gary. Yeah. Steve, Amber, I want you in the stopping team. Oh, he's gone all masterful. We'll watch for punters. Soon as Wesley's done that deal and gone home, I want you to stop him. Out of sight, search and arrest if found in possession. Any doubt, bring him back here, son who. Strip search. How many punters are we hoping to pull? Well, I'll send in the undercover. Then we'll wait for a couple of genuine buyers. Now, once we've got the final deal on tape, I'll give the nod to the entry team. If I'm right about where he keeps his stash, we won't be leaving him any wiggle room. Uh, remember, this is the coal lane. You need to keep Laura and Lance informed. I mean, you walk in there with your size tens, you could risk undoing all the goodwill that they've worked so hard to build up. From what I hear, they don't need any help from me. Joel, Terry, I want you on the arrest team. Where are you going to be? In the observation point. Giving the orders. What, you've managed to find a secure OP on the coal lane? I think that's going to be a problem. Tea? Oh, a nice one. <laughs> it's Sri Lankan. The Marnie put me onto it, but I've got ordinary if you prefer. Ah, oh, no, it's all right. Biscuit. Oh, thanks. Hmm. Hey, it's good of you, you know, to let us use your flat. Glad to be of use. Terry, are you in position? Yes, mate. Gary Bess running an opera. What's the world coming to? Every dog has its day, even Manchester Terriers. If he pulls this off, we'll all come up smelling of roses. It's just hope the boy doesn't crack under the pressure. Smug Kate. You didn't want to play ball? I know the law, thank you, darling. First of all, when the kids are hanging outside his shop, but when it comes to a dent in his profits... Do you want to get over with him? No, he's not going to listen. Hang on. If he's selling to under-18s, we can have him. All we need is proof. I thought you said a knobber was out of the question. There's more than one way to skin a rat. The rat is leaving his hole. <laughs> Bye. 
flashlight is going round to the north side of the flats now. Oh, I've lost eyeball. Don't panic, mate. We've got him. The undercover's about to do a deal. Take a leaf, but it's all in there about the safe neighbourhood unit. Thanks very oh, much. Well. I've had a word of trading standards and they're willing to look into the off-license, but it's not going to happen overnight. They need evidence. So what's the plan then? We'll talk to the kids. Oi! That's all we need. Uniform we've pitched up. Us. He's running for home. Let's go. All units, go, go, go. What's happening? Back up. Go! What's going on? Are you alright? We met at an accountant's who do. What's this got to do with the assault? We think your boyfriend might be involved with this bin raiding gang. That's ridiculous. He's got a perfectly good job. Why would he want to start going through other people's rubbish? Have you ever seen him with anybody else's bank statements, checkbooks, that kind of thing? He's a financial consultant. He deals with that kind of thing every day. We've got footage of him loading bin bags into his car. That's probably a perfectly reasonable explanation, if you ask Mark. We will. We wanted to talk to you first. In case you were involved. I think you should leave. Your boyfriend's called Mark Pemberton, yes? So? Well, you told us Mark was selling this flat so you two could get out of town. According to the list we were given, he's only renting. How can you sell a flat that you don't own in the first place? He must have made a mistake. No mistake. We checked with the letting agency. But we've had people round. Were you here when they came? No, I was at work. Have you ever been to Mark's office? He usually works from home. So he's got papers here we could look at to confirm he's legit? Don't you need a warrant for that kind of thing? Not if you show them to us. You know, the thugs that you had to scuffle with could have been working for Mark. He's got that filing cabinet, but he usually keeps it locked. Security. I know where the key is, though. You've got the wrong bloke. Yeah, yeah. Wesley James, possession and supply of a Class A drug. Yeah, here, there's been a bit of a glitch. You could have blown the whole other. Your operation could have killed a 14-year-old boy. All right, Gary. You're doing a drugs raid on my estate. You didn't think to mention it. Look, if we kept every plank up to speed, yeah, we wouldn't get anything done. You made me look a right idiot. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll do you a leaflet, yeah, explaining how I've just nicked a major drugs villain, and you can push that round your old ladies. There's no pleasing some people, is there? Have you got any evidence for me? I said I wouldn't let you down. Let's see how the interview goes. Want to tell us about this? Never seen it before. <laughs> Did you learn that line from your dad? You were witnessed trying to flush this down the toilet of your flat. Now, we haven't had it tested, but it's what? Half a kilo of high-grade cocaine. Did anyone actually see me? You were seen running into your flat. Well, maybe I need to relieve myself. I mean, I just told you I'm a plumber. Drink a lot of coffee on the job. Cold weather like this. Things tend to creep up. OK. You were filmed selling these drugs to individuals we now have in custody. Now, that sounds like evidence to me. No comment. This cash... 
was found in your possession. These are photocopies of notes issued to an undercover officer who was filmed scoring cocaine from you. Can you spot the resemblance? No comment. Come on, Wesley. You're in a lot of trouble here. You sure you don't want to tell us where you got all this stuff? No comment. Right. Pick a card. People's identities, bank details, all game from rubbish. Great news! The contract on the flat came through early. All we have to do now is get your money into the joint account and we are in business. Essex, here we come. What is this? Mark Pemberton, I'm arresting you on suspicion of deception. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Run if you like. I don't fancy your chances much. Oh, yeah. Copies of your bank statements. Showing money going in, but none coming out. I'm not a big spender. Oh. These are receipts for items found at your flat, paid for in cash. Look, I'm a plumber. Sometimes I do work for cash. So dish me up to the VAT. Doesn't make me a drug dealer. Wesley, we know you're a dealer. We've got enough here to ensure you do a stretch in prison. Hey, maybe you could go to the same nick as your old man. You could get a family room. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? My old man's a loser. I made more money fixing taps than he ever did. What, so you thought you'd up the profit margin and start dealing big? I didn't want anything to do with any of it. Well, it doesn't look that way to us. Help us with the bigger picture and you never know. You might get a reduction in your sentence. Look, we just want to know where the gear came from. It's as simple as that. I found it. Oh. He found it. I was doing a cash job for an old couple who had just been rehoused. They were complaining that the toilet wouldn't flush. Previous occupants must have left in a hurry, if you know what I mean. One kilo of uncut cocaine sitting in the tank and no one out looking for it. I had all the contacts because of my dad. I just thought... It's too good an opportunity to miss. How's it going? Well, Wesley told a story and Joe's got to check it out. Has he admitted to dealing? He has, but... Right, don't tell Dan Murillo until I get back, yeah? Gary, I really wouldn't... No, I want to see how grateful she is. I mean, we all know how she likes the result. Yeah, and we all know how she hates having her time wasted, mate. True, but fortunately, I don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah. Gaz, really? I'm just gonna get myself smart and done, yeah? There you go. So what you look got me here for? We want to make sure you're okay. Hard to have you locked down for dangerous driving. You weren't looking where you were going. You shouldn't have been chasing me. <laughs> There's something I don't get about you, so. You say all you want is a quiet game of cricket, and then you start acting up with lads like Josh. Josh is a mate. Care on the way you're going, you'll end up in a young offenders institute. At least that'll keep me off the streets, eh? Look, I know it hacks you off when you want to play cricket and all your mates are beard up, but you could put a stop to that if you wanted to. Do you know where they buy their booze? No. There is only one off license on the coal lane. Then why are you asking me? If you made a statement, we could use it to put pressure on the light and see. It might make him think again about the true meaning of community spirit. Look, cooperate, and you never know, we might be able to sort you out some proper kit. You mean like pads and stuff? I'm not making any promises. But I have to grasp on my mates. Look, we're trying to help you here, give you a chance. You think I'm a mug? You don't care about me, you just care about nicking people. Can you believe that? I reckon he's got you sussed. Sorry? Why didn't you arrest Sol this morning? Because we want to keep him on side. That's what our role is about, getting people to open up to us so we can nick more dealers. Exactly. <laughs> Sol's right. All you care about is getting results, and that attitude won't wash with the residents of the coal lane. They're sick and tired of policemen who make out they care when they don't. I do care. Really? Well, all I've seen is you getting fed up and irritated with people. I mean, do you really want to make a difference to the estate? Well, if you're honest with yourself, I think you might find the answers no. In which case, speak to the inspector, get yourself taken off the safer neighbourhood unit, because at the moment, I'd say you're doing more harm than good.
What? Are you going to arrest me now? No. I want to apologise. You are right. The reason I'm on the coal lane is because there's a big problem with drugs and we want to sort it out. Maybe I was a bit too focused on that. Having to deal with Charlie Sars and your problems was just winding me up. Doesn't mean I don't care. Whatever, man. I want to make the coal lane a better place. Sweet. I tell my mum you can decorate a flat. I know it sounds a bit pony, but I'm not that different from you. I had mates when I was growing up who were into all sorts. We all make choices about which way we want to go. Listen, I've talked to the council and they reckon you can use the rec for regular cricket practice. And I'm working on the kit. What about the off-licence? I want to leave that to trading standards, mate. And you don't expect me to do nothing? I reckon I owe you for putting me straight. <laughs> what? You ain't got a clue. How do you mean? You're wasting your time with the off-lead. Guys had us banned for months. So where are you meant to get in the bin? Josh. Yeah. Nearly home time. Bad day. Something like that. Best thing to do is go home, have a large glass of wine and forget all about it. I don't think what I've done will be forgotten about all that quickly. I've really put my foot in it this time. What happened? I had a goat PC pal, a real going all, no holding back. What about? Well, that's the thing, nothing really. Poor bloke's just trying to do his job. Well, Lance is a decent guy. I'm sure if you talk to him about it, he'll be fine. You didn't hear me, though. I really let rip. Can't have been that bad. No, well... How would you feel if a PCSO turned to you and said she thought you weren't doing your job properly? Did you really say that? More harm than good were, I believe, my actual words. Why can't I just keep my mouth shut? Look, Laura, it's no good worrying about it. And whatever happens, make sure you have that large glass of wine. Oh, no. Look, Lance, I know what you're thinking. Laura, how do you fancy taking part in a nobbo? I'm sorry? Just had a word with Sol. Turns out Josh is stealing the alcohol from the off-licence. I reckon we try and catch him in the act. You in? Yeah. Oh, and uh, Leela, if you're free, we could use an extra body. Sure, I'll clear it with the sandwich. Um, are you not angry with me? What for? For saying what I said. I shouldn't have done whatever I thought. You are a PC. I respect that. I'm sorry. Look, Laura, as far as I'm concerned, you did me a favour. It's so easy to get caught up in this job. You forget why you started doing it in the first place. It doesn't hurt to be reminded from time to time. So, if anything, thanks. You've got this all wrong. What's going to happen to him? Well, I doubt he can explain all this away. He was going to rip me off too, wasn't he? Don't you know if someone? Come on. Yeah, come on. Oi! Why is party, are we? Judgment day. They were even getting to sort the taps in the ladies' loo. We checked his story out with the old couple. They did call him on the toilet with a flush. So we've no idea how the drugs got onto the estate in the first place. The previous tenants were Asian, but that's about as good as it gets. I heard Wesley coughed. I'm oh, sorry, mate, but your uh, big-time drug dealer turned out to be a chancer with a wrench. So Operation Mercury is back to square one. Well, if you want any of the leads following up, I'm still your man. Thank you, Gary. I'll bear that in mind. Oh, dear. Looks like the honeymoon's over. <laughs> what do you think she's gone off, mate? Oh, uh... Look, I don't know why he's picking on me. That offy guy is as bent as they come. Buys all his booze from France. Why don't you ever think he reports his nick in it? Thanks for the tip. We'll pass it on. Josh Giggs. 
Oh, what's the matter, Gary? Someone stolen your whistle? He's had a very disappointing day. Oh. Yeah, at least I'm it's a drug dealer instead of messing about with kids. Let's face it, Gary. The only reason we got Wesley so easily was because Margaret gave us such a good OP. Or in other words, the cleaner was more up than you. Come on. Well, shouldn't you lot be out directing traffic? How's our target, Mr Ripley? Oh, his real name's Mark Brown. According to PNC, he's been in the frame for deception before, using the same M.O. I know, Scott. I trust him. I hope you're right. I hope so. Let's go for a drink. No, thanks. We can talk. I don't need this right now, Yvonne. Where'd you get all this from? Unclaimed stolen goods. Wicked. Persuaded the superintendent to sign them over. Uh oh, here we go. What's going on? Just a peaceful game of cricket. <laughs> hey, nice kit. Did someone get mugged? No. He gave them to us. Are we playing limited overs or a full game? We already got our teams. But you'd be needing an umpire, right? That's what I call result. <laughs> Why? What a day. I got you a glass of white wine. Oh, thank you. So. And I've still got to go to court. Meanwhile, Greg... Don't even think about it. It's just going to eat us up. Yeah. You know what you've been up to? You don't want to know. Yeah, I do. Let's talk about you for a change. What? I just thought we agreed not to talk about Greg, that's all. Why has he been bothering you? It's just something that he said when my colleagues interviewed him after the assault. Well, what? What did he say? It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does. If it's got you worried. <laughs> Come on, honey, don't hold out on me. Tell me what he said. Well, he said you want to put Cameron in hospital. That's rubbish. Well, yeah, I, I know. I think mean, I know it was an accident. Oh, you checked it out? Well, no, one of my so-called mates decided to play Miss Marple. Scott! Are you OK? We had a row. OK? I can't even remember what it was about now. But Karen went for a drive to clear her head and ploughed into the back of a skip. It's fine. You don't have to tell me. Just forget I even mentioned it. And Greg's lying. Now, I couldn't do that to her. I couldn't do that to anyone. But now he's got your mates believing him. Oh, it doesn't matter what they think. Oh, doesn't it? That man killed my wife. Now everyone's listening to what he's got to say. Well, he's not going to get away with it because I'm not going to let him. Stop! 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 Please! Next time on the bill. Could have been the shortest dinner I've ever seen. Squished like a cat on your first day. It sounds like he's making you choose. Choose what? Between him or your mates. If I ask you to do something and you're free to do it, you do it. 